Hello and welcome. I'm Professor Jim Kearns, and this is some video of a telepresence robot created by students at Lawrence Technological University as part of their senior capstone project, and it's been donated to the Ford Paquette Avenue plant in Detroit, Michigan. Students worked with the museum staff to determine what the requirements would be for this telepresence robot. They designed the robot, they fabricated the robot, they raised all the funds, and the robot is now at the museum and they're planning on using it to conduct remote tours across the World Wide Web. What you're looking at right now is some of the testing done by the students. There is a tape on the floor that you can see. It's a magnetic tape. The robot has Hall effect sensors underneath and it follows the tape. If you look at the screen on the robot, you can see there's a little red, red circle and a green circle. Those correspond to red and green buttons on the remote that would be held by the tour guide. So all the tour guide has to do is press the start and stop buttons to have the robot follow the line, stop in front of a exhibit. The tour guide can then, you know, give his pitch and press the button and move on to the next vehicle. Also a manual mode that they'll be using later on. And you can also see on the screen on the robot uh, the actual webcam output so the docent can uh, see what he's broadcasting at any time. Here it is coming around the corner at the end of the museum. This chunk of video is from the annual meeting at the Piquette Ant Plant Museum where the robot was presented to the members and board of the museum. Uh, they're demonstrating it for everybody, just like it would be used in the museum. And as you can see, there's, of course, the artifacts in the museum. There's members of the public. So safety is really important in this design, and the students worked very hard to make sure that it would work safely and not damage people, places, or things. Now here, Brandon is going to stop the robot by pressing the button. He can then walk, hang up the little handheld remote, walk over to the display of that particular vehicle, the simulating a dose and talking about it. When they're done, they just pick up the remote, push the button, and move on to the next display. <laughs> you just heard was the simulated Uga horn in the robot uh, that sounds off when somebody stands in front of it, just like he's doing right now. Okay. And, uh, you know, it uses an array of ultrasonic sensors to detect any obstacles in front of it. Of course, if it loses track of the magnetic tape, it just stops. Um, Underneath the yellow and black striped things on the front, which are kind of out of sight at the moment, are physical bump sensors as a last range of defense that will cause it to stop if it touches any obstacle. Now here it's in manual mode. Brandon's moving it over to a different section of tape. And the controls in the manual mode, of course, are forward, backwards, right, and left, just four buttons. It's a pretty s simple interface. And now he's going back the other way. Um, they really did a nice job on this robot, I have to say that. The uh, Uga horn and the self-stopped actually turned out to be pretty popular there. Um, for dem Joey's demonstrating it there. And this young man here, of course, saw it and wanted to get in and set it off himself. So he seemed to be enjoying the robot. <laughs> a little bit about the museum itself. Um, the Paquette Avenue plant is, as you might guess from the name, located on Paquette Avenue in the city of Detroit, Michigan, not far from the modern day intersection of I-75 and I-94. Uh, this was the second building used by Ford Motor Company, which was founded in 1900. Three, I believe. Uh, this building is the first building actually owned by Ford. The, the previous building had been just rented. They constructed it in 1904. They built the models B, C, F, K, N, R, and S in this plant. And then in 1908, uh, Henry Ford invented, created, um, 
designed, however you want to put it, the very first Model T and started building Model Ts here. Between 1908 and 1910, Ford built about 12,000 Model Ts at this facility. I should point out this was before they developed the moving assembly line, which happened at the Highland Park plant. The plant is now operated as a, as a museum, open to the public. If you get the opportunity, I highly recommend a visit. And if you can't visit, well, Henry here, the robot the students built, should be able to take you on a guided tour.